Hi guys, Jim from Measure Square here. Welcome to the bathroom design tutorial in the Measure Square 8 special topic series. In this video, we will cover designing a bathroom from start to finish, including room drawing, tile creation, tile patterns, elevations, wall design, and we'll end by showing a 3D view of our room. To begin, we will go to the top left of our takeoff tab and click the import button. We'll select our first file by left clicking and clicking open. We should see our preview pop-up allowing us to check which pages we want to bring in into our preview. Note that if the image size field on the right for a page is in red, we can use the image size drop-down in the top left to lower the number to allow higher resolution files to be brought in. Once we are in our preview window, we can zoom in and out using our scroll wheel. To set scale, we can select the scale from the drop-down menu on the top right. We can also use the scale button to manually select a dimension to reference where we left click on each side of a dimension and then type in a verified dimension to scale the page accordingly. Once scaled, we can select import to current tab to bring in one or more pages into the same takeoff tab in measure square. For this project, we will need to also import some PDFs for our finish schedule and elevation. Our importation process will be similar, adjusting the new pages scales as needed. Once all of our pages have been brought into the takeoff tab, we can view them using the tabs laid out in the bottom row of our view. Or we can click the black triangle to access all of our layers in a list format. We will find our finished schedule relevant to this scope of work and begin our project item creation now. First, right click on project items, click new product, enter in the product name and product type, in the estimating info view, we can enter the details of our tile such as size, waste add-on percentage, sell by box, and the number of square feet covered per box. Once these details are entered, click save. To make additional products, click on the plus icon in the top left and go through the same process with naming and choosing the product type and configuring the product estimating info. Click Save. Another approach to making similar items is to go up to the top left and click the Duplicate button. This will allow us to stay in the product estimating info view and modify the name, display color, and other information quickly, saving us a few additional steps. Note that on our bullnose, we can set the cell by type to piece, giving us a piece count for the item. We can then set up the square foot per piece for additional estimating info, 0.125 square feet in this case. Click Save. We will go back to our finished schedule to get the details for our next products. Click the new product button and follow the typical procedure. For this hexagon tile, we will need to take an additional step. Click on the Shape drop-down menu and select Hexagon Regular. Note that the Measure Square 8 calculates hex tiles by inputting the dimension of the widest part of the hex tile, 12 inches in this case. Click Save.
click duplicate to make our first smaller hex tile, click save. Duplicate the small hex tile and change the name and color for the accent hex tile and click save. Next we will make our base tile. Note that the product type selected is wall base. This will give us a linear foot quantity for our product. Make sure to configure the sell by as piece, setting our linear feet per piece as two in this case, since it is a four inch by 24 inch tile. Click save. Next, we will make our grout product. Choose the product type as grout. Click save. This completes our project item creation for this project. Our next step will be room takeoff. To begin, zoom in on the plan and then left click the draw button located in the top left of the menu. Then begin tracing out the room shape by left clicking at each internal corner as shown. For the opening leading into the bathroom, we can hover over the wall and right click and choose delete wall to make the opening. Our next step will be to use the elevation tool to draw in our shower curb. To begin, let's go to our elevation and read the dimensions of our curb. Three inches high by four and a half inches wide. We'll go back to our room diagram and click on the elevation button. Hover the cursor along the wall edge until it highlights green, like so, and then left click at the corner where the elevation begins. Draw a line across to the opposite wall until it is highlighted and left click again. Build a short line along the right wall for the width of the elevation and left click. Continue in this fashion until the elevation has been completed. Note since the elevation is set for cabinets as a default, we will need to change the height from 3 feet to our shower curb height of 4 inches. First, click view wall to see the side profile of the elevation. Then left click on the side elevation to highlight it red. Then go to the top right and expand the properties view for the elevation. Under the wall height field, enter 3 inches. Hit enter on your keyboard. Note the elevation sides will now look appropriate. Now that our room and shower curb are drawn, we can apply our products. Let's start with the top of the elevation. To begin, left click to highlight the correct tile blue and drag and drop the product onto the top of the shower curb. Drag and drop the correct products to the faces of the shower curb next. Let's verify our products on the finished elevation and then apply our floor tile. In the shower floor area, we will need to insert an accent of small hex tiles around the perimeter. Let's reference our finished elevation to see the layout, then go back to our room diagram.
To begin inserting the accent tiles, right click on the tile from our project item list and select replace tile in diagram button. This will allow us to hover over the shower floor and left click to place an individual tile or a row of tiles as needed. Continue around the room until the accent is complete. Our next step will be designing wall stacks for our project. Our first step is to find our shop elevation and our plan set. We can view this elevation and start off by making our offset pattern for our 3 by 6 inch tile. Right click on the tile in the project item list and select design tile pattern width. Left click on the appropriate thumbnail of the tile preview and zoom in to make sure it meets the project requirements or design your pattern using the approach covered in our tile pattern design part one video. The link will be in the bio below. Once we are happy with the pattern, we can click save to project, enter a pattern name and click okay. Our next step is to make our herringbone pattern for the center portion of the wall. Right click on the tile in the project item list and select design tile pattern width. In the design tile pattern window, we can left click on the tile to highlight it red and then click on the duplicate button to add a second tile to our pattern design area. Since we are designing a herringbone pattern, we will need to rotate this second tile 90 degrees. To do this, go up to the rotate selected tile counterclockwise. We can then take the rotated tile, left click and hold down the left mouse button and drag the tile from the bottom right corner until it is properly aligned with the first tile so that the herringbone pattern is displayed in the pattern preview area on the right side. If the preview looks correct, go ahead and click Save to Project in the bottom right, name the pattern, and click OK. Once the two patterns are created, we can go back to our room diagram and start putting our products on the wall. To begin, go up to the top center and click the View Wall button. This will show our room's walls on the right side of the room as elevations, allowing us to apply a product and design the layout accordingly. If we zoom in on the room, we can see that the walls are numbered, helping us make sure we are applying the correct product for that wall. In this case, the left wall of our shower is shown as wall number 11. So we will go through our walls on the right until we find wall 11. We can then left click on our tile pattern from the tiling menu on the left and drag and drop it to the wall. Note that the pattern was laid horizontally so we will need to go to the top center and choose the layout direction button. This will allow us to draw an arrow from left to right allowing us to rotate the pattern until the tiles are running vertically on the wall. Note that when we zoom in on the area near the shower curb, we can see the tile position is off compared to our finished schedule. To correct this, we will go up to the top center and left click on the pattern position button. Hover over our wall section and then left click when our red dot is on the bottom left corner of this section of the wall. This will make the wall tile identical to our finished elevation. We can now go through the same process for the right side wall for our shower.
Once the sides of our shower are drawn, we can design the wall stack for the center of the shower. First, we will go back to our finished elevation and review the design. We will use the dimension tool in the top left to define our measurements for the different vertical stacks on the wall. We'll left click to highlight the tool yellow and then go down to the wall elevation and click on each edge of the vertical wall stack to get the dimension. Then glide your cursor down and left click to place the dimension where it is visible. Do the same procedure for the smaller vertical stack on the wall design to obtain that dimension. Now that we know the dimensions of our vertical wall stack, we can go back to our room diagram. Find the appropriate wall section of our shower and begin building our vertical wall stacks. To begin, right click on the wall and choose add vertical wall stack. Drag your cursor along the wall until the sample line is in the correct location as defined by our dimension on the finish elevation, one foot in this case, and left click to place a line. We can then glide our cursor over to the right and left click to place our second vertical stack as before. The operation is similar for any horizontal stacks. We would just need to right click and choose the add horizontal wall stack. We can then drag and drop the subway tile to the small areas of the wall and go through the same layout direction process to adjust accordingly. We can then drag and drop our herringbone pattern from our tiling menu on the left to the center stack of our wall. We will double check our pattern position by going to the finished elevation. We can see that the pattern is placed appropriately. We can now view our completed room by clicking on the View 3D button. To finish up this project, please see our Getting Started series for videos on how to create a worksheet and generate a report. Links for these videos will be in the bio below.